Good morning, everybody. Good it morning. Is, it is October 26, 2021. Um, it had to come to an end, boys. I tried to signal the alarm last week. I tried to say, hey, I think we're, I think the Bengals have something going on there. And I think we should, at the very least, pay attention to it uh, going into this week. And what ended up happening was... Uh, frankly, just like a beatdown, man. Cincinnati wins this game 41-17. They improve to 5-2, and two, and they share a piece of the AFC North. Although, because they beat Baltimore, if you actually look at the rankings, they're going to have the Bengals up there at that number one spot. Baltimore drops to two. Um, we talked about it last – I talked about it last week in the pod. Um, Joe Burrow is a guy. Uh, I don't really – They've made so many improvements this year, Um, and it's important to talk about that because I was going to give them, maybe not this year, but next year, I was going to say that's their year. That's the year where they can really go on a run, and I think it's here earlier than we anticipated. Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase, man, it works. He ended up racking up eight receiving yards, 201 receptions, eight catches, 201 yards, a touchdown. Um, and his longest was a run of 80 or a, a pass from Joe Burrow that he ends up slipping a bunch of tackles and breaks off to the house. So I'm here with Brad. I'm here with Chad. Um, hey, guys. I guess we're just going to start with this. Like, so as of right now, if you look at the standings, Cincinnati's up on top in the AFC North. Um, did you see, was this more about the Cincinnati Bengals in this game? being better than everybody anticipated they would be? Or is do you see any of what happened yesterday for the Ravens as a long-term trend? Brad, we'll start with you real fast. Do you think like, because I look at the Bengals and I'm just like, they made so many changes, they were bound to be better. Yeah, I mean, I see it as obviously the Bengals are a good team. I mean, I don't really think it's anything new. They've been doing pretty good all season, especially offensively. Um, I mean, if you look at their, their stats, you got um, you got Joe Burrow. I said it last week he was like sixth in um, passing yards. He has he's fourth in touchdowns behind Murray, Mahone, Stafford, big names, Brady, obviously. Chase is a monster, great rookie receiver, looking like one of the best receivers in the league right now. He's second in yards, fourth in touchdowns behind. Cooper Cup, Hopkins, Evans, which go along with those same quarterbacks that I just talked about that Joe Burrow is up there with. And then, obviously, Joe Mixon, he is the third leading rusher in the league. Um, So their offense is a great offense. Our defense was not really a good defense coming into the game. So, I mean, it's not like we really underestimated them or anything, but um, they were a good-ass team. I mean, they came out, showed up, and offensively, we didn't really show up. I was expecting it to be a high-scoring game, um, but uh, to me, the Bengals are who I thought they were. I just, I really thought it was going to be Cleveland in the spot that the Bengals are in right now. But it's a uh, first game, so we went five straight. So I'm not really too worried about it. But they did whoop our ass. They showed mm-hmm. up. We didn't. Yeah, I and I wonder if the bye week had something to play um, into this. You know, like I was thinking about it, and I'm like, well. If you're going to take a loss, might as well be before your bye week so you can review the tape and figure out what you need to fix and you have a week to fix it. Um, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially in the early half of the the year, too. So, I mean, this stuff, hey, five five and two, like you said before, came in being five and two, expecting – we were never expecting that with the team that we started with. So, hey, I'm happy. Yeah, me too. Uh, Chad, what did you think? Well, I personally was underestimating the Bengals – just based off, I mean, even their, uh, you know, their offseason moves. I know they got a lot of dudes on defense, um, but I felt like they overpaid for that uh, DN from the Saints. Mm. Uh, they had Eli, Eli Apple, but he has been a journeyman that hasn't really, you know, kind of, I mean, he was drafted by the Giants, yep. and then oh, he uh, eventually made his way to the Saints. And he just never really stuck anywhere. So I wasn't really – that was never really on my radar. Um, they he was made a, a couple other moves. Pick, wasn't he? he was a first-round pick by yeah, the Giants, yeah, and it never panned out. Yeah. So to me, I was just like – and then in the draft, they, you know, they 
pick Jamar Chase over like three or four really good offensive linemen after your QB just tore his knee up previously. So I was like, there's the same old Bengals doing stupid stuff, you know, picking a receiver over an offensive, one of the best offensive linemen in the draft. Hell, but it's, I mean, it's, it's panned out. I mean, Joe Burrow, and I even thought, you know, Joe Burrow would have a slow start coming off that knee surgery, but he is, I mean, he's been pretty lights out. Brad just, Brad just laid down the uh, stats for you. He, I mean, that doesn't seem like he's not playing like he uh, had, I mean, he, he, he didn't just tear his ACL last year. He, it was all kinds of stuff. So. You know, what really impressed me about him. Yeah. What's that? You know, um, it was, uh, Last year watching Joe Burrow play, you could tell that like he was waiting for things to happen a little too long. Like, mm-hmm. He was waiting a little too long for plays to break because I look at their receiver core. I've, I've always kind of liked their receiver core with T Higgins, AJ Green, when he was there, he's been a monster for most of his career. He, he shipped out to Arizona this year, but like they have Tyler Boyd, they have, um, I mean, they've had some good receivers, but the problem is, you're right, the offensive line couldn't protect him very well. Mm -hmm. I think he compensated. Yesterday, I mean, uh, on Sunday, it looked like he was – the balls were coming out much quicker. Yeah. I mean, much quicker. The the pass rush, there were a couple (laughs) times where I'm sitting there, I'm like, ooh, sack, and the ball's out. And it's out definitely on time. Yeah, he definitely – there were – I agree with you. There were a few times where I was like, that's sack, but he, like, you know – his footwork was pretty impressive in the pocket after that knee surgery, which was very surprising. And it helps yeah. that his receiver, he's got Jamar Chase, who he played in college with. They're, they just kind of banked on, okay, these two are used to each other. They won a national championship together. Let's just take that concept and move it to the NFL. Yeah. But the, it, um, this, I mean, this, I mean, this was a competitive game up until halfway through the third quarter. Like I was not expecting the route in the fourth quarter the way it happens, you know, uh, both, yeah. both mean, defenses were playing pretty well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, our pass rush was non-existent, but I mean, we held them to 17 points until the, and we had, well, it was 17, 13 af- after our touchdown at Hollywood, they scored a touchdown pretty much right away. So it was right. 20 to 17, yeah. 20 to 17 in the third quarter, halfway through the third quarter. I mean, that's, that's a close game, you know? And when you've uh, come back from 19 points in the exactly. season before. Yeah. You know? it's, so what, I mean, what really, what I think really turned the tide was our, our offense after we got that pick, um, Humphrey got that pick and it was in the fourth quarter with maybe like eight or nine minutes left. Our offense just couldn't do anything. We would, I mean, we, we had to convert a fourth and seven on our 30 or 35 yard line. And we just couldn't get it. And then Daniel that's when a pick when it's going to Hollywood. So yeah, yeah. Must yeah. That pick. Yeah. That would have, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Cincinnati proved me wrong personally. Um, I would say yeah, he ain't wrong when it comes down to it. Like it was a really good game all the way up until, I mean, even when he threw that pick, it was still, we were only down by 10 points, 27, 17. Yeah. And it was just, yeah, we just couldn't really turn around. And as honestly, this is big place. Um, we had we had them. They had less than at that point. I think they had less than fifty yards rushing on us. Yeah. So we were stopping their they were stopping their rush game. We really didn't have a, too much of a pass rush, like Chad said. We had one sack on the day, which came. I think I want to say it was in the fourth quarter. It was yeah. Um, I think it was Campbell that got him. Yeah, well, it was um, right. It was right before the pick. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, there you go. And um, um, but. Yeah, it was it was a it was a close game up until about that point, and then um, it just got out of hand. So we yeah. we we played a good we played a good three quarters, but obviously there's four, so the game's always won. That's why you always see people they put their four. That's when the, the game the game's won in the fourth quarter. So yeah, that's right. Uh, I think a big issue too, like I saw some pretty shoddy tackling out there oh, yeah. towards yeah. the end of the game, and I think part of it is. You know, your offense can't generate anything, so your defense is exhausted by the time they're transitioning back onto the field. Um, Chad, you were talking about tackling being an issue earlier in the season, and I kind of just, like, poo-pooed it. I was like, ah, that's something that you can just – like, I'm a firm believer that if you're going to make a tackle on somebody, a big part of just completing a tackle is you just have to want it more. 
You know what I mean? You have to want to get the guy on the ground more than the guy who wants to escape from you. You know, it's, it's actually, and when you've got two guys who are elite athletes and are, you know, 200 pounds plus moving at such a speed, it, it, it can become um, difficult to do, but like, I just feel like it's been an issue for this team for a couple of years now. Did you notice anything in the game where you're just like, like the P Ryan run at the end of the game in the fourth quarter, no. he basically just like, he puts his arm out against Anthony Averett mm-hmm. and Averett is so exhausted at this point. Cause he's been targeted all fucking game. Cause that seems to be what the, that seems to be the strategy for teams. They're just like, Oh, just target Anthony Averett. And eventually yeah. you're going to break open. He's exhausted and he just gets pushed away and P Ryan's up the middle and, and in, in the fourth quarter. Like, do you see this being something that they need to address in the bye week And do you see it being a problem going forward? Because I've definitely noticed it the past couple of years, at least where it seems like we're whiffing on guys. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a problem. I mean, without, with, without our spotty tackling, who knows if that Jamar chase play breaks out to 80 yard, 85 yard. I mean, three guys touched them. Granted, it was like, you know, Chuck Clark dove for his legs. He, he knocks down Marlon Humphrey who could only like get his hands on his shoulders and then I guess it was Elliot who completely misjudged it because he wasn't expecting those two guys to miss. And he, he like did a little, you know, spin cycle out of there. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, so it's a little, it's a, it's a mixture of like bad luck and just bad form. And just like, I mean, these guys obviously know how to tackle like. And Jamar Chase made a great play. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's sure. an all time highlight reel that unfortunately yeah. is going to be on YouTube channels everywhere. Yeah, for sure. When yeah. they describe this guy. Um, um, the tack, like, um, I know CJ is it Uzamba, the tight end. Like I yeah. know he's probably like sixty pounds heavier than, or, and he's like two or three inches taller than Marlon Humphrey. But Humphrey couldn't get him down on that first touchdown pass. Um, like you said, Averett on that last P Ryan run, like P Ryan wasn't touched once until P Ryan uh, stiff arm Averett, and it looked like Averett wasn't even. I mean, Averett's a lot smaller than that running back anyway. Like, what is he gonna right. do? Yeah, but yeah, it's definitely an issue moving forward. It, I mean, it's been it's been an issue since the Kansas City game, in my and uh, and we just been you know it's been overshadowed because Lamar's been doing crazy shit and you know winning games for us. Um, but when the offense isn't doing it so hot, it really shines through that our defense just isn't tackling right. And 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 things were I mean it it was fine in the first half and like. Bynes was like still all over the field like that's a big improvement in my opinion you know getting Bynes and like getting Bynes in the middle of the field to lead the defense versus Queen who seems to be you know he needs a little bit more time to kind of like get his feet under him I think people are saying that he's like moving too fast like he's he can't control his like energy you know he needs to like let things develop he's moving at 100 miles an hour over you know but he needs to like you know, kind of like s- slow down the game, I guess is kind of what I've been hearing analysts talk about for him. So, I mean, that's a good step forward with having Bynes in there. Cause that, that huge, that was a huge play on that third and one uh, where he like caught, he was like called out the play. He's like, they're going to do QB sneak. And he jumped, he did a Troy Palomalo yeah, jumped over and like wrestled, uh, wrestled Burrow to the ground. Grant, they, you know, converted it the, the fourth and one, the next play, but it was still a hell of a defensive play. There were a few drives in the first half of the game where you're just like, God, it's just going to be a dog. Like you're yeah. going to have to fight for every single yard. Like exactly. there were a lot of third and ones, third and twos for the Bengals. And I'm just like, and it, they just kept reoccurring. The thing was, they didn't have any penalties in this game. Yeah, yeah. There was nothing yeah. that really pushed them back at all. Yeah. Uh, they played a, they played a clean game, I, you know, and yeah. there's been a couple of times with Chuck Clark where like, we saw in the Colts game when Jonathan Taylor takes off for that long touchdown, he's way out of position. Yeah. Yeah. The angles. Yeah. Yeah. And then I feel like he took a weird angle with the Jamar chase tackle. And mm-hmm. I don't know whether it was because he thought the first guy was going to get him or whatever, but like yeah. it just, and, and I, I don't know, it's just a couple bad plays recently that have showed up and it's just so unlike Chuck Clark. Another thing I've noticed too we're not generating turnovers the way we were last year or the year before that. Yeah. Marlon Humphrey's punch. I think people have figured it out. Like it just doesn't see Uzma. 
he goes for the ball right before he goes into the end zone and Uzma, it, uh, the ball didn't even move. Yeah. I know the guy's gigantic, but like, I don't know. So we're not generating turnovers on defense. And when you make even the smallest mistake against a receiver like Chase, that's what's going to end up happening. Yeah, you know, I, think, I, I just. And I, I think it boils down to our pass rush. Mm. You know, wow. uh, you know, if you, if you have a decent pass rush, you, you force a lot of turnovers, you force a lot of mistakes and we're just, and, and we're just not getting a pass rush at all. Currently. Yeah, I, mean, I was just, I was just sitting here thinking like you're sitting here talking about um, queen and queen really hasn't done much for us this year. He hasn't really showed up. He's kind of like in a sophomore slump, but you're talking about his energy and how much energy he has. I, I wonder if like what he could do as, like just coming off the edge. If that's what his issue is, why not use yeah. all that energy? It'd be an explosive uh, explosion off the edge and trying to get him towards the quarterback. Yeah. If, especially with us not having Derek Wolf. That's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. I, I guess the I guess the thinking is they want him in the hold uh, because he's instinctual when it comes to running backs. Yeah. To be like to be fair, this is a criticism that people had with him coming out of the in the draft. Like I, I had I wanted. Um, like Kenneth Murray. Murray. Kenneth yeah. Murray was available. Um, he's been injured for the Chargers uh, for a good portion of his career, so I'm glad. It seems like in the early portion, I'd rather have a healthy queen mm -hmm. than an injured Murray, obviously. But um, that was one of his criticisms coming out in the draft was that he was in – it was viewed as a positive and a negative. He's an instinctual player. Um, and I think that's why they want him in the hole because they want to stop the run game. But I, I don't disagree, Brad. It would be interesting to see him as almost like a D-end coming off the edge on a blitz i mean we blitz everybody else till we blitz Tavon yeah. young we blitz cornerbacks like why not why not send patrick queen i that's not a bad um that's yeah. not a bad point you make there um i want to switch uh gears real quick to the run game because i think our run game is in big trouble i i think oh, yeah. i think last week I think the chargers just have a really bad run defense i, I just when mm -hmm. all these guys are going off i'm just like oh wow it's nice to see Devonta Freeman, Latavius Murray, and um, Le'Veon Bell get touchdowns in this game. Like, this is great. But then today, or uh, on Sunday, excuse me, I keep saying that. I, it was just like the run game couldn't get going. Le'Veon Bell, Brad, I, I'm gonna just I'm gonna start this question with you. Is Le'Veon Bell a better option than Tyson Williams? Shit, no. Where's Tyson Williams? Why is Tyson uh, Williams? Yeah, I've, been, I've been complaining about that the whole season. I don't. Got, I honestly he had don't two, know. Two carries for ten yards. He had the highest yeah. average out of all the running backs. We haven't seen. What's the deal with this guy? Dude, I have no idea, honestly. But we are off. Yeah, our Russian offense is absolutely terrible. Which kind of sucks. I mean, obviously it sucks because Gus goes down, and then Dobbins goes down. So we kind of knew shit was going to happen. And we got Latavius Murray. Murray was doing good. Tyson should be playing a lot more because, like you said, his per carries, he's what? Like, I think he's leading our team at like five points something um, per carry. So I don't really know why we don't really utilize him enough. But we, I, just, we have made enough efforts. So, like, I looked up the stats last night. Obviously, Lamar is going to go off for 1,000 yards again. That's nothing new. He is our rush offense. And, um, I know that's what you put in your notes. Like, it, we're, I mean, we can't just keep leaning on Lamar. I mean, that is, like you said, is it, do we have a good rush offense or is it just Lamar? It's definitely just Lamar. He has 480 yards rushing, uh, 6.3 carries a game. And that is only 21 yards behind all three of our starting running backs combined, which is absolutely terrible. And, um, it just sucks, especially now that Murray's out. He's our leading touchdown getter. He has, what, four touchdowns. Now he's out. We just got to go, and we have to make a move and go and pick up somebody and actually pay somebody, especially with, what is it, the deadlines, what, on this next Monday, next I think? Tuesday, next Tuesday, I believe. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. We, I mean, that's really our only option. Like, you look at anybody else's team that where somebody gets hurt, they have somebody else that's behind them. We, hadn't, we just went and picked up guys that were just on the street. Mm -hmm. I mean, people that literally had just got dropped. And Murray, I mean, um, Le'Veon Bell wasn't even playing. Mm -hmm. Freeman wasn't even playing. Murray had literally got dropped by the Saints. So they kind of just like fell in our lap and we didn't have to go searching for a good player. And I feel like it's um, 
it's time, like Chad said last year, our our defense started stepping up right after this trade deadline, and we picked up, um, I think, was it Wolf, and then the one guy from the Jaguars, was it? And after that, like our, our defense started getting a lot better, so I'm hoping yeah. that we can make the same moves on offense, and it needs to be at our, I mean, our running backs. Oh, yeah. Um, That's, I'd, I'd put a billion dollars at Eric DaCosta is going to be making some moves this off week before the trade deadline. We, we need to, we need, man. We need pass rush and we need running backs. You know, yeah. it concerns me. I, there was an ESPN article that said that other teams were looking at inquiring on the Ravens running backs um, yeah, before the deadline. That. And I knew exactly who they're talking about. I'm like, they're trying to get Tyson Williams. Absolutely. He's not getting the snaps. He's averaging to your point, five and a half yards per carry. What I mean, yeah. I and when I say what's with this guy, I say it meaning like I think he should be playing. Yeah, I think it. I think it's his. I think it's his pass protection. He looks pretty. I mean, I saw a couple things on um, because I've been trying to watch his pass protection when he's in the game, just because that's what I've heard. And there was a couple times where he like whiffs on blocks. So yeah. I, I'm, that's the only thing I can think. Of. That's the only thing that because he's a young undrafted rookie, like. He's, his pass protection has to be pretty horrible. And the, but, uh, but last time I checked, we had Patrick Ricard. You know what I mean? Like, why can't we? You I, need, you know, you need a running back to pick up blitz. You mean? No, you do. Yeah, you definitely back, do. That's but... a that's a part of the game. You, you the running back has to make good decisions on who to pick up and not you know not miss blocks. And with I mean, I'm not saying it was. I mean, I'm just saying with the with our spotty offensive line right now and the injuries on the offensive line as well. Like, I mean, Lamar was sacked five times yesterday. So it's like you you want to put the best running back in there to that is the best blocking running back, you know? Yeah, and, and we're, we're going to we're going to talk yeah. about the uh, actually that's our next topic. We're going to talk yeah. about the offensive line. I loved how I introduced it. I just said, Chad, is our offensive line completely fucked? <laughs> and that's just going to be the question. You'll answer yeah. that. But, Brad, I want to get back to you. Uh, just any last thoughts on the run game? Like who like. Who would you like to see us add? Because again, it's not like we lost J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards permanently. They're, they'd have to find a spot on this roster. I, I, uh, I'm just worried that teams are going to come cannibalize our running backs, and Tyson Williams is going to be out of the building. Yeah, well, the only so the realistic looks that I could find was obviously Melvin Gordon and uh, Marlon Mack, but obviously there's. Uh, Ronald Jones, which their coach said that they're not even interested in trading. Um, but, I mean, when it comes down to it, it's a business, so we'll see what happens in the next week. And he is a great – to me, he's a great running back. I yeah. mean, a man ran, I think, 900 yards last year. Um, he just – once he, he – I guess he, he fumbled that ball in the first game this year, yeah. and they just haven't trusted him since. And plus they have um, Giovanni Bernard, who has been their um, receiving back for the year, and on top of, obviously – Four matches being he's going off this year. The top two people would be um, Gordon and Mac. And I mean, Mac, he's uh, he tore his Achilles last year, but before that, he had a thousand yards, um, eight touchdowns, and then the year before that, 900 yards, nine touchdowns. So, and that's his second and third year in the league. And wow. then obviously, last year he came and then tore his Achilles, so he was out most of the last all of last year, really. Um, so uh, those would be my two big pickups. And Melvin Gordon was a good one. He was back with the Chargers. He was an awesome receiving back, mm -hmm. too. So, I mean, if you can utilize him in the receiving game as well, um, those are two pretty good possibilities. But there's, uh, there's about five options, and hopefully yeah. we make one of those moves. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind any, uh, any one of them. Um, let's go real quick to the offensive line. Chad. Is it fucked? Like I, Patrick McCarry goes <laughs> down on Sunday. Like is the bye week going to bring some of these guys back? We hope, but is there any, like, because that's the only thing that we can really root for now. I mean, what, who, what is our line composed of at this point? I mean, uh, we were playing pretty well with, and uh, like uh, what with McCarry taking over at, uh, at right tackle and yep. make, let, allowing villain the waiver to get to his natural position at left tackle uh we were playing pretty well and then when we when we heard that ronnie stanley was going to be out permanently i was like oh well i'm not too worried about it because our, our line's playing pretty well but then makari gets hurt um 
and we, st- we you can't for- you can't forget about Phillips though. You know, Phillips Phillips was hurt in the first Vegas game. Uh, he's missed the last four games, but now he's back and he he filled in for uh, McCary after he got injured this week. Um, he had a costly penalty. I might be I might be out on Tyree Phillips. You think so? What was the What was the penalty? Um, let's see. I gotta go and look for it real fast. But it was just something. It was just something stupid. Like yeah, yeah I think it was like holding or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I might no. I might be out. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, what I, was I, that? I, I, there was a holding penalty. I don't remember. I don't remember who it was on, but that uh, Lamar ran for like thirty yards on that uh, that possession after the Humphrey interception. Right. Yeah, down the and, left side. Yeah, and, the, and then yeah, up the left side. And I was like, oh, sweet. Like, we're down 10 points. Lamar just got a 30-yard run. This is looking good. But then there was a holding pen, which looked like it might have been Phillips. Not a yeah, I think, I think it was. I think it was yeah. Tyree Phillips. Yeah, it was a yeah. big one. Yeah, um, I mean, it was tough because that's a scramble, anyways. Anytime, I mean, he's scrambling. It was pri- it was a pass play, and then he had to go out. So yeah. anytime that happens, you're going to get one yeah. of those holding calls, unfortunately, right. pretty, sometimes. Yeah. For a blocker with with the I was listening to uh uh Jonathan Ogden talked about it on the radio this weekend. Like they were asking, like, how how would you have liked to, you know, pass protect for uh an athlete like Lamar Jackson? He was like, I would have loved it, but the uh not knowing when he's gonna run and when he's gonna pass is kind of like the real ish like as a as a you know, as a protector. You, know, you, you want to know, know. It's, you know what's funny about that, Chad? I was watching film the other day of the 2019 season. Uh-huh. They do some really, in, they did some really interesting shit to try and figure out what Lamar was going to do. Like, there's yeah. one play where he takes off on the left side. I forgot whoever they were playing. They had a gigantic, like, big screen. The offensive lineman is down the field. You can actually see him look up yeah. at the screen because it's it, it, the screen is focused on the ball carrier. Yeah. And he see he saw himself and Lamar right behind him, and he goes, "Oh shit!" And he he you can see him. He's looking up, and then he drops down, and he and he goes to engage the blocker. Yeah. So they found out some really interesting ways of figuring that stuff out. Just yeah. as a side, it's yeah, it's that's, cool stuff. that's pretty fun. Yeah, that's what that's what Ogden was kind of alluding to is like knowing like, I mean, knowing when it's time to like block for someone passing versus blocking for someone running like because it can it can change just like that yeah so yeah. but i mean so yeah you, i mean i i mean our offensive line has been playing decent lamar had i mean this past game lamar got sacked five times i think it was more because their cup the cincinnati's coverage you know there was nobody I think, open i think that and i also think it's because lamar doesn't know when to bail and run and because he's waiting for stuff to happen. Yeah. Sometimes I watch Lamar and it's like the QB clock that we talked about in the, in some of the previous pods, like sometimes he's holding onto the ball in the pocket for like five and a half, six seconds. Yeah. And I'm like, it works are sometimes. You gonna yeah. Let it go. I, at this point, it's just like, look, if you don't see something and you know, it's not going to develop, just fucking take off. Yeah. I don't think, dude, you're, you're 24 years old. I don't care right now. If you're yes. doing it when you're 28, I have a problem with it. Yeah. So, yeah. Since uh, it looked like Cincinnati was doing a lot of, they were dropping back a lot of people into coverage. Yeah. Which is, a, I mean, that's a great way to play our offense. <clears throat> there was just like zone. It looked like, you know, four and then two and three behind them, just like covering uh, uh, specifically on the you know, yeah the fourth and seven and then the fourth and four, 15, they were just dropping in the coverage, man. Like basically and rush just pass rushing with like three or four guys. And mm-hmm. I mean, Lamar can beat it because he's, he's proven he can. He, I mean, he beat it against Detroit with that yep. long pass to Watkins. I wonder if that, uh, that might be like a big deal. Like obviously we got Bateman back. And he's playing well. I mean, he got yeah. 80 yards on three catches. Uh, but, you know, ever and I mean, I think Watson coming back will be a huge but, boost after this uh, bye, too, hopefully. Yeah. Ever since but, Bateman came back in, Bateman's cool, and then nobody else has showed up. You know, I haven't yeah. seen Prochet. You haven't seen Duvernay in the last two weeks. Yeah. And yeah, that's, Watson, when Watkins gets back, if he comes back, Next, uh, on, on week nine after his, I think it was his, his hamstring. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it'll be a big difference because then we'll have 
three three receivers, four if you include Andrews. So yeah. I know, and I wonder, you know, I, I'm concerned about the run game, you know, because the run game sets up the pass, right? Mm-hmm. If we can't run the ball and we're having Lamar, I mean, actually, he didn't throw a whole lot. And it, part of it is because he was hardly on the field, right? Because they kept just, they the drives would stall out. Yeah. He threw the ball 31 times. The sack stuff is just like, you, he could avoid a vast majority of his sacks, if yeah. he just decides quicker to bail out of the pocket and run the ball. And sure. there yeah. were there were phases in the game where you saw him do that. You know, he'd step up in the pocket, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and he's off. Mm-hmm. He's already picked a direction. He had a run that was like 13 yards. It had been a penalty, so it only got us to like, I think it was like a third and third and short or whatever. But I'm like, oh, if that's on a fir- if that's a first down play, we just picked up a first down. I feel like a lot of it has to deal with us not utilizing our running backs as pass catchers too, though. Because yeah. if he he has – you're saying he's sitting there for five seconds. Well, if he has a check down, yeah, check he doesn't down, have yeah. to – you know what I mean? He doesn't have to like, yeah. keep looking downfield, downfield. They're covered. Okay, covered. There's my running back or our linebacker. Boom, pass it to him real quick. There's three yards. If not, he can – somebody coming across, uh, one of the running backs come out and then come across on the little slant. Boom, extra yards. And, and I think every other team that. does that. And, we don't. I think we would have had that, but we don't have J.K. Dobbins and we don't have Gus Edwards. We got a bunch yeah, of dudes that we picked up off the street trying to learn yeah, the offense. Freeman Freeman showed that he could do that back yeah. when we played. Um, but yeah, the Colts. He did That's it for true. the whole last drive. Um, mm. He had three catches for like thirty-three yards, which was a big part of that last drive for us. Yeah, so, That's true. I mean, we just got to utilize what we have because I mean, right now that is all we have. So. But we'll see. Yeah. Like I said, we'll see. We'll see when it comes to running back position next week. Yeah, absolutely. I think offensive line, running back, and potentially linebacker might be up. Uh, and well, pass rush in general might be some trade options this week for yeah, Arizona for sure. Costa. As long as we for don't sure. trade Tucker. No, they won't. No team can afford him. They'd have to pay him thirty-five mil, dude. Facts. Oh, now it's thirty-five mil. God. 35 mil. <laughs> it's not 35 mil it's 20 mil 20 mil is the hard cap i've got i've gone down and i expect you two to come up and we we're did. gonna meet somewhere we came up from six to ten and that's as high as we'll go we'll see all right let's talk about specific plays we liked from this game because there's a lot of negative to talk about but there's also a lot of positive things that i saw on the offensive side of the ball <clears throat> um that if we can just string more of this together we're going to have a really dynamic offense. Um, so the play where I think we're on the 26 yard line, it's second and nine. Uh, we're, we have the ball back. It's the beginning of the third quarter. Mm-hmm. They do have this pass to Bateman where Lamar just lays it out on a dime, dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And I can, I would, before, when we were on break, I was nitpicking with Brad about like what we should do with running backs in this situation. Cause we talked about it earlier. Tyson Williams, should be out on the field, but if he's really having problems blocking, like, is there any way we can get around it? Um, so on this play, the running back goes out and he's sort of, instead of going out and, and like filling in the flat on the right side, he sort of just like picks up the defensive end that the left guard's been pulled and he already gets it. And Lamar just lays out. It's like, he's a deer or something. He almost like hop steps and throws it. Mm -hmm. Rashad Bateman is wide open to get the ball wide open and then gets yards after the catch and goes out of bounds. And it's like, when you see him throw the ball, it just goes to show like what Rashad Bateman can bring to our offense. Like he's just so many times last year and even the year before when we were really, I mean, you think we're a running team now in 2019, it was just on a whole nother level. Um, He can get open. He can create separation he can take advantage of blown coverage and he can catch the ball mm-hmm. and he's healthy. Finally, you know, it, imagine having him against the Raiders mm-hmm. week one. Um, do you see them expanding? Do you think when Sammy Watkins gets back, it's going to be more of a rotating like uh, wide receiver room because it's already sort of loaded and I'm sorry, but I don't think Mike miles Boykin makes it back next year if they end up keeping any of these guys. Yeah. Um, but Chad, like, what do you think of Rashad Bateman? Do you think that they can include him more in the offense? 
He was very efficient. I mean, he's he had three catches for 80 yards, so that's the big thing. It's like that's don't going into the season is like we we when we do pass because I know we're going to be a more of a run, rush heavy team, but when we do pass, it was the efficiency that was you know lacking the past couple of years with drop passes. Um, so he's been very efficient with his opportunities. 80 yards on three catches is a pretty big deal. I think Marquise had the same amount of yards on three catches, but just one extra touch with just the, it was one touchdown. So I, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, especially with this bye week, you know, and then Sammy Watkins coming back. I'm uh, we're, I mean, we're five and two. I mean, our, our offense is explosive already. Like, we were able to come back from a 19 point deficit two weeks ago uh, to win in overtime. Like uh, we scored 50 some point, well not, was it 50? No, 30 some points against the chiefs. We uh, you know, we're, we're a great, we're a great team plagued with injuries. Um, and we're five and two at the, uh, at the bye week and it's looking good so far, personally, I think. Yeah, and this is a great year, too, for people. Like, this debate has been raging about Lamar Jackson on, like, whether he's, you know, capable of leading a team further into the playoffs. I think this is the perfect year to sort of evaluate that, right? Because mm-hmm. he's got no – none of his starting running backs are there. His offensive line is complete. And it goes to show, like, the player that is Lamar Jackson, you can criticize his throwing and you can criticize all these things about his game. I, I certainly have things where I'm just like, come on, Lamar, like we could work on this a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, But the overall result is it, 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 it's incredible to watch. I mean, he has more wins than any other quarterback under the age of 25 years old. And it's, he doesn't turn 25 until January. Mm-hmm. What he's able to bring to the game and, like, what he's able to do and how dynamic he is, it's just, like, we're seeing it on the passing side this year because we don't really have a choice. Yeah. But, you know, like, we don't have a choice. that we, we can say we're a run team, but if we can't get a guy over 100 yards rushing consistently, yeah, I don't, I don't see how – and I looked up a stat that said we were – or it, it came up in the broadcast on Sunday. They said we were the fourth best – rushing offense in the league and I was like how is that possible we don't look we don't look like it and then I'm thinking to myself it's Lamar like Lamar Lamar Jackson is making those stats look a little more inflated than they should yeah Um, and then I want to talk about the brown pass too because this is just like this throw man is just right on the like it has to be right because you have the corner and the safety coming over to get um, Mm -hmm. Hollywood right He's at the 10 yard line and the ball is soaring through the air. And then it just comes down. It couldn't have been placed any better, maybe a little bit closer to him. But I just think I have this thing with Hollywood Brown where like he makes these dramatic catches. Right. But it's because he's so freaking short. You know what I mean? Like a guy who's six, four, you know, like a giant. I don't think he has to dive for that catch. You know, I think that you have a taller receiver in there. That ball, it looks perfect i mean it is just right on the money and a taller guy he would have had eight feet Mm -hmm. uh in the end zone so it kind of just backs up what we're talking about like you agree like do you think this is a this is a season where if you're i guess if you're a lamar jackson hater this is the season you're gonna look at and be like this is when he had no running backs he had no line like what do you think of that do you think it's gonna be do you think that this is what we should be seeing from Lamar Jackson at this point? Uh, we haven't had to really see him throw the ball too much because we had very good running backs behind him. Now you're seeing it because he has absolutely no option but to throw the ball. And he looks great. I mean, he's – I think he's like sixth in the league right now. He's actually right – he's seventh in the league because he's right behind Joe Burrow. with like He has like 1,900 yards passing already this year. Um, and Hollywood looks good too. I mean, Hollywood has six touchdowns already, but, um, he's just, it's just so much pressure being put on Lamar and I don't, I mean, it sucks that it's happening, but, um, if we can hopefully get our running game, like without our running game, 
we have to continue to pass. But if we don't have the running game, they are able to cover our receivers because they're not worried about anybody but Lamar. All you got to do is put a spy on Lamar and hope that you can, you know what I mean, stop him. Um, and you don't even have to worry about who else is in the backfield. So, I mean, he's throwing some pretty good dimes that that pass you're talking about to uh, Hollywood. Sorry, Marquis. Um, was a perfect, another perfect ball. All his, all his um, deep ball passes that have been to Brown, essentially, I'm pretty sure like all those, all the deep balls that he has for touchdown are all to Brown, but he is putting them in spots that only he can catch them. Um, and he is, he's looking like the quarterback that everybody wants him to be. And he's still putting 88 yards on the run game, which is pretty substantial. Um, but it's not going to, for as as a Ravens fan, I don't see, I don't see us being able to make a playoff push or make it to a playoffs, continuing to just put it all on his back. And I, I honestly rather it not be all on his back, yeah, you because know, I mean he is just one person, and then I feel like that's how the man's going to end up getting injured. You yeah, I mean? it's, we're kind of similar to the Tennessee Titans. Like if 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 Derrick Henry gets hurt, what does that team morph into? Does it become yeah. like a does it become like a Ryan Tannehill passing machine? Like it's sort of the same thing. And you can say that about a lot of teams, right? Like what if the Green Bay Packers didn't have Aaron Rodgers, yeah. right? Like what if um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers didn't have Tom Brady? I don't know. You yeah, know. We know we know what they look like without Tom Brady. <laughs> Shit. I get yeah right yeah. yeah. And, when it comes to this team, I, I share the same concern. I don't want this to just be like, we're going to abandon what it is that we say that we are for the sake of having um, like a dynamic offense. I just think the run game is just a mess right now. I, I, I've said it a, a few times and I, I just, and that was bound to happen. We lost our entire running back room, right? I mean, what are you going to, like, what are you going to do? You have to kind of pick guys up off the street for that. Um, but yeah, I just, when it comes to Lamar this year, it just is like, you know what I've noticed the most? There aren't as many ducks either. These balls that you see on the broadcast where you zoom in and you see that, let's say it's like in the end zone, the end zone camera, right? It's looking at the ball coming in. It's a Joe Flacco rope, dude. Yeah. yeah. The yep. ducks are going away. I think he's figured out the, the spiral. spiral. He definitely worked on that off. So yeah, there's definitely, the spiral is like way better for sure. Now just yeah. just imagine him throwing those balls on a play action. Just imagine how many more people would be down. It wouldn't be just Hollywood using his speed to get behind a safety and uh, pass the corner. You know what I'm saying? But we don't have that good running back to where we have that option, yeah. unfortunately. And I feel like that would really open up the field for Bateman getting more catches. When Watkins comes back, it'll open up the field for him. And a lot more for Emily Andrews is already getting – as Chad puts it, peppered. So um, it's just going to open it up even more if we can find somebody that a defense has to worry about. Right now, only person they have to worry about is Lamar sneaking out left or right. So you know. yeah, and and it's funny you bring that up too because like there were times in this game where Lamar sometimes I think he tries to do too much. Like uh, there was a play, I think they were towards like the 50 yard line and he's in the, he's in the pocket. The pocket basically collapses on him and he's got two ways to go. And he's looking to his left. The left is wide open. The only guy that's out there is the safety. And he, there's so much space. Lamar could juke that guy out of his shoes with the amount of space that he gave him. And what he does instead is he like looks to the left and then cuts back to the right and he runs right into his offensive lineman, who, by the way, is trying to hold off a Cincinnati Bengal, you know, trying to sack him. And it's like sometimes he like runs into his own guys or he trips over their legs or something like that. And I, I, I don't know, like it's because I, I guess it's because the way he runs is just instinctual. Like he just that's he bobs and weaves and tries to find a way. But I almost feel like he's it's too much like. Dude, if you're open on the left, just run to the left. Just yeah. go uh, and let things – once you get out of the pocket, you can start making those decisions. But it's almost like he's having 
he's having like these, okay, how am I, try, how am I going to escape the pocket? Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, fucking t- Taylor Heineke can escape the pocket. You know what I mean? Like even it, like t- uh, Ryan Tannehill can escape the pocket. Get out of there first and then decide where you're going to run with the ball. You know, I, I, that might be just me being nitpicky. Um, but it's one thing where I sometimes I watch him and I'm like, man, if he had just taken off to the left, dude, that would have been a 25 yard game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I, th- I think overall, by the way, if I had to grade Lamar Jackson this year, I'm giving him like an A minus. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's the passing game has evolved and he's played a lot better. I know the touchdown interception ratio doesn't sort of like tell that story, but it's evident if you watch the team. The only like uh, monkey on his shoulder this year is the turnover, the random turnovers, the fumbles, the bad interceptions, and they're and they're very few and far between. I mean, we've had a had a couple in the Vegas game. He had the one in the Colts game on the one yard line. He threw a bad pick last week. Some yeah, some of his turnovers are the only things that are like you know keeping him from being like the top of the MVP conversation in my opinion mm-hmm. but I'm yeah when it comes good. to the decision making with running and stuff you know it, it, it's like it's like uh pros and cons for both ways like if you i mean some sometimes it's not great to you know just run when you have the chance because you could you know uh miss a play that might be developing depth further down the field and vice versa like i remember one play that sticks out to me is like the last last year against the poop bowl when lamar was missing for a quarter and a half and uh, he came back with in the final drive and it was like fourth and six and the, and the, the touchdown passed to Marquise Brown, where he's running to the right. And I was just, I remember screaming like, just run for the first down. You got it. Cause there was a blocker and there's, but then he, you know, throws it over the top of the defense and it's a touchdown to Marquise Brown. So that's one of the times that it was better for him not to run, even though the first down was right there. So, I mean, I think, yeah, I, I feel like when you're in that position, you know, you're and you're getting all this criticism that he gets, he is trying. I mean, he and he's already done it, in my opinion. He's already proven that he makes great, you know, he makes amazing running plays and decisions, but he has also made great and amazing passing decisions as well. And he's probably just trying to juggle that in his head where he's like, I'm t- I don't want to be a running back. I want to throw the ball. So I can see him sometimes missing like obvious run options, but I feel like it's a, it's a good development. I think it's great for his development to make those kind of decisions to, you know, not run and hope and hope something develops down the field, you know, you know what else too, it's it's not going to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm also speaking like I'm on the field in his, in his helmet. Like he obviously is thinking about a thousand other things that I'm not even considering when I didn't, you just have to do that when you're a running quarterback. You know who I blame for – it's funny that you say that because on when you're watching on the broadcast, I sort of blame the camera angle, right? Like <clears throat> the camera angle, it's always this side shot, and you see guys running to the sideline, and you're like, oh, run, pick up the first down. Yeah. If the camera was just behind – like let's say it's behind Lamar Jackson so you sure. can see the whole offense, like a Madden. Let's say it's like Madden, mm-hmm. right? In Madden – I could see, like I could run with Lamar Jackson, see a guy open, and be like, "Oh, I should obviously go there, yeah. right?" I feel like with a TV broadcast, if they had a camera behind the guy that just sort of followed, and then because we would have seen it, yeah. we would have been like, "Hollywood Brown's wide open, throw the yeah. ball." Yeah, and maybe exactly. we would think differently about him. Um, yeah, yeah, we're looking. We're, that's a yeah, that's a big, that's a good point because we're looking, we're looking at one point of view, whereas I mean, they're on the field actually playing. <laughs> And they, yeah. they're seeing a lot different things than we're seeing as viewers. So, yeah, 100%. yeah. I think a lot of things get a lot of things get, you know, the interpretation is way different. Right. We're seeing. Yeah. It. And that's yeah. and it's crazy because it's just camera angles. Right. Like yeah. that's the only thing that makes you feel one way or another. Yeah, um, definitely. Is there any points in this game? I, I'm going to spit this to both of you. Are there any points in this game that you want to like really get into and dive into? Because. We could talk, we kind of talked about like all the big plays, right? Yeah. I wanted to talk about the Bengals getting the touchdowns towards the end of the game, but I think that's just like a matter of missed tackles, right? We sort of already. It was, yeah, that and it was just garbage time 
friggin- and they're exhausted. The defense yeah. is just yeah. exhausted. You can see them like it's just such a slow hustle by the end of the Anthony Averett. The guy kind of like half stiff arms him and he's just like, fuck it, man. I'm ready to get out of here. I'm ready to go into a buy. Like yeah. we're five and two. It could be worse. Yeah. Let's just get yeah. the fuck out of here. At, at that point, we had already lost the game. It already was that that fourth down play where Lamar missed through the pick where we had to get the first down. Um and yeah, it was just more of just like, hey, who picked up Kareem and is about to get some fantasy points and whoever has <laughs> whoever has Baltimore's defense is about to be upset. But um, the only thing that I can think of is there's two times that we could have kicked field goals. Like, you, I know you texted mm-hmm. us and it's like, hey, why didn't we kick that field goal? Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, it's a 58 yarder. You never really want to have to kick a field goal that long, especially when it's such a close game with such a an offense that we really couldn't stop. You don't want right. to get on the ball at that with, with that position right there at the 40 yard line. Yeah. Um, but that could have been, I mean, we do have Justin freaking Tucker. Yeah. Uh, Twenty million dollars, thirty-five million dollars, whatever you want to pay him, he's going. I mean, fifty-eight yards, he can make that all day. Um, but I guess I don't know if they were just thinking about, hey, if he does miss this, we give them great position. But that could have been, I think it was a fifty-eight yarder, and another one would have been like sixty yards. So there could have been two, yeah. two times where we could have had six points. Not that we've lost by much, like uh, only six points or anything like that. But it's still points that we could have put on the board that would have put us into a, a different position when it comes to defense or our offensive scheme. Um, but is, yeah, it fair to, is, is it fair to say that the Bengals wanted this game more? Like, I, I feel like the talk going into the week was just like, we want to prove that we're for real. Like we're for real five and two. Everyone's looking down on us. Like best way to do that is to beat the Ravens there at the top. And, and like, honestly, we're so banged up at this point. Like, it just seemed like towards the end of the game, they were just like, man, I'm just ready to get into this bye week. We Like, we have they, – they're rolling. This game obviously means a lot more to them. I felt like it, this game meant a lot more to the Bengals than it meant to the Ravens. Am I, like, off base on that? Because I just don't see how, you know, going into a bye week, you, you're trying to recover from all these injuries. You got a 5-2 and two record when you didn't know what your record was going to be mm-hmm. at the start of the season. You got to be pretty happy with it. Like, is it fair to say that the Bengals just kind of wanted this game a little bit more? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's that's a funny question because it's like, are we are we talking like fan perspective or are we talking the player perspective? Well, no, like from a player perspective, you always want to win, right? You yeah. always want to win the game. You always want to do your absolute best. But at some point when you realize like, because these guys aren't <laughs> blind on the sideline, right? Like these guys, I'm sure the defense is just like, fuck. We only got a first down on that drive and I'm going back out on the field again. You know, by the time with all these stalled drives and no points, it gets to the point where if you're a defense and you're going out there and you've only been on the sideline for, you know, three minutes to catch your breath. Now you're going to go back out there and stop an offense that's already fucking humming. By the time you're in the, I mean, the game really got out of hand in the fourth quarter. And I think it's just because, you know, guys are beat. They're tired. They, they, they're banged up everywhere. A lot of their leaders aren't on the field because they're out with injuries. You know, at what point, I don't think ever a player says like, oh, I'm not going to play my hardest. I'm not going to give a hundred percent. I'm not going to give my all. But if I'm in the locker room, right. I, I could kind of just say like, damn, this game got away from us because we're just fucking exhausted. Yeah, You know, yeah. and finally the buy is here. Like we can get some things back. We can go over things that can make us more efficient and we just can put this win or we can put this loss in the rear view. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a bigger win. It was a bigger win for them than it was a big loss for us. I can say it that way. Like, right. We, they had a lot more to gain from a win than we did from a lot losing from a loss. Like we're, we lost, but we're still five and two. Um, we still got to play them one more time and we still have the rest of our divisional games ahead of us. Right. Um, they gained a lot because they proved that they can beat the best in the division after, I mean, they've been the, they've been the worst team in our division the last three or four years. So they, Mm -hmm. I mean, they prove, they proven that they should be in the conversation as a, a legit AFC North contender. And, uh, they definitely opened up my eyes cause I wasn't, you know, 
I wasn't giving them the respect that they've earned this first quarter of the year. So, or quarter and a half of a year. So yeah, I'd say. But there's like, again, there's, you know, 11, there's what, 10 more weeks of football, right? It's week seven. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. We're both five and we're both five and two. Let's see what happens. We have a lot of time. We have a lot of time. Plus we have, we like, we have the potential of picking up players in this next week. I say the loss happened at a perfect time. Yeah. Yeah. To me. Like, I mean, we were bound to lose it. We were, we've been winning all these games by the skin of our teeth. And um, I just feel like it was, we were bound to lose. Um, but when it comes down to it, I think we played a pretty good game. It was just random bad, big plays, missed yeah, tackles. Bad tackling, missed, yeah. Yeah. Missed, missed opportunities for us. Again, they have – all five, so they have five touchdowns, one for 82 yards, one for 55 yards, one for 32 yards, one for 46 yards, one for 21 yards. So they're all just big plays, and three of them were just missed tackles or a blown coverage. Blown coverage. Like, yeah, oh, that second. Yeah, was it Uzuma? What was yeah, that his name? That second yeah, touchdown. Yeah, that second touchdown he got, blown coverage, was wide open, sitting there, nobody on him. He got behind the linebackers. The corner sloughed up. And then it was up, I forget was it Clark or Elliot was sitting there and just completely missed, uh, yeah, well, misjudged the tackle. Yeah. And at yeah. that point, we just and we made him just look like an a stud. I mean, he is a big dude, but he isn't. He's not two touchdowns, ninety eight yards, good. Uh, but um, I guess he is. He did. He, I mean, he, he did might that. be. I don't know. It's, yeah, he might be. That's, but, um, it was, but, but yeah, that um, was definitely that second touchdown was blown coverage, like. Yeah, yeah, I think I think three of our guys it was they went to, it was zone and they went they all three of them went to the flat, yeah, and just let CJ run behind them like I don't know what they were and thinking. Then, so yeah. you and know, then, uh, yeah, Elliot. I think it was Elliot or no, no, it was Clark. I believe Clark had to cover. I mean, what are you gonna do? You have to cover fifty yards one on one with the guy that's twice your size. Like, yeah, right. Know? Right. right, and then that chase chase goes for two hundred one yards, but that one catch was eighty two yards, and it was three missed tackles. Yeah, you know I mean, and that's no excuse for that because, like, I think Chad said that it looked like the safety pulled up because he thought that Humphreys was going to have the tackle. You yeah. got to play through the whistle. You always play to the whistle's blown. Well, it was that's more of like the is. angle. It was it was so weird. The angle was bad. Because, yeah, but because... I, I feel like it was it was like the whole thing with the, the one. Um, I think it was the Chi ooh, no Detroit. It was Detroit, it was yeah, Detroit game thing. where they thought Patrick was gonna have the um tackle, but he missed the tackle. So um I think I don't know, it was it Houston that pulled up on it? I forget who it was. I, Somebody else pulled up on the tackle and it completely allowed the yeah. guy get a twenty one yard catch off of something that should have been three yards. Right. Yeah. It's just you gotta keep you gotta keep playing. Even if you think the dude's going to get tackled, you got to tackle both the dudes. I mean, tackle your dude and that dude. Make sure that guy gets to the ground and doesn't True, get extra yeah. yard. But those, those. I mean, we played a good game. I don't think that we – the score shows that we got blown out. I don't really think we got blown out. I think it was a pretty good game. It was – a consequence of all those scoring, like the, the quick scores like that, it made the game last forever. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was like – I texted you guys during the game. I'm like, God, it's like 41-17. And there's still like six five minutes. Left. minutes. Yeah. I'm like, dude, can we get out of here? Like the 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 afternoon, the deep afternoon games, they were already like deep into the first quarter. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, can we just get out of here, dude? Like I like I was at the point where I just wanted to get out of there. I was like, it's obviously not our day. We should go through the schedule and see who we should root for for this Ooh. week. We don't we don't have a Ravens game to watch, so let's okay. Let's, let's see. see who we let's should. So the first game, I mean, obviously, Bengals versus Jets. We want the Jets to win. And maybe, and just maybe, Joe Flacco, who was just traded for by the Jets, will beat the Cincinnati Bengals for us for old time's sakes. That even would be though, really wild. Even even though, the Cincinnati, even though Cincinnati basically had our number during the Joe Flacco era. Like, I'm sure we went like 50, yeah. I think we're like, you know, 50-50. But there was a lot of big games where the Cincinnati Cincinnati beat us. I remember those days. But if Joe, Flacco, is, if Joe Flacco could beat the Bengals for us on the bye week, that would be pretty freaking cool. That would be pretty great, yeah. yeah. That would be nice payback. And then you have Pittsburgh at Cleveland. Yeah. We, we, we got to root, root for the, the worst team. 
and Steelers are the worst team. Are Browns they? have a Browns have a better record. Browns have a better record. They, I, they do, but they're headed they're headed south, man. All their guys are hurt. We don't know yeah. what Baker. We don't know what his That's shoulder true. is. Chubb we have no idea. It's a benefit having Keenum over yeah. Baker personally. I don't think Baker's that good of a quarterback myself. I mean, he's I mean, a starting quarterback, but he's not – I mean, he. I don't think that he's going to be – he's not a Super Bowl winning quarterback. I don't think Case Keenum's a Super Bowl winning quarterback, but he has – he took the Vikings all the way to what the – was it 2017? Took them to the championship, um, championship. right? Yeah. yeah. Or the divisional round, so he, yeah. Yeah, so he's a, he, he, he's he been in the big games, and they're getting ready to get Chubbs back, I think, this week. Yeah. And then they have – even without Hunt, they got that dude Johnson that was – blew it the fuck up blew last up, week. Yep. Their team – their team – was kind of stalled last week where I thought, hey, maybe they could lose a game, and they didn't even end up losing the game. Yeah. I, I'm, so say, I don't, I'm saying yeah. uh, Baker Mayfield with a shoulder injury is probably just as good as Case Keenum. And, and Do you know what Case Keenum's career record is? No. 31 and 41. 31 and 41. What's Baker? Yeah, after, after the last. Uh, it's better than that. But, but it's such a – that's not fair because it's such a small sample size for Baker. I mean, it's yeah. only like his second year as a pro and he's going to have like a, he's so, going to have it's probably a 20 year it's career. His fourth, it's his fourth year as a pro boy. Fourth. It's he yeah. was drafted in 20. With, with Lamar. Oh my gosh. It's been four years already. Yeah. It's That's the pandemic. Not... It, it slowed down my like sense of time, dude. Yeah, I, like sure. it's been a blur. I kind of want Cleveland to beat them because yeah. if Cleveland beats them, I don't think Cleveland is better than Pittsburgh and I'd rather have Pittsburgh have a loss on their record than a win because Pittsburgh has figured something out. I think they're using really short passes, short, hard passes from Ben Roethlisberger. Mm -hmm. Najee Harris is a good enough back where they can do some play action or bootleg or whatever. And the defense is ridiculous, dude. They're ridiculous. The TJ Watt is ridiculous. I mean, uh, freaking. Cameron Hayward is ridiculous. I mean, I would rather see them take a loss when they think they're going to get a win. Mm -hmm. Because if I look, because Cleveland, I just don't know. Even if these guys are coming back from injury for Cleveland, that's not to say, I mean, even last week, it seemed like, oh, oh, they got OBJ back. He's fighting through an injury. And then he goes down in the game and then he's out for the rest of the game. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't really know if these guys are healthy enough to play contact football until they go out and actually do it. Right. Like, and wouldn't you want Pittsburgh who they've won the last three games, I think Pittsburgh, they've won the past two games and the Browns, the Browns are on, they beat the Broncos, but the Broncos, they're a mess. So they've also lost two games. They're coming off a win, I guess, but I don't know. I'd rather have, I'd rather have Cleveland win this game. So we obviously have – we're a divided house when it comes to the Pittsburgh-Cleveland game. So uh, leave a comment down below and give us your thoughts. Who do you think comes away with the victory? Who would you rather see win, uh, the Steelers or the Browns? We don't want any of them to win, frankly. Like, if they could both take a loss, that would be great. Um, it could be a tie. It could be a tie. I think – could be a tie. I think a tie would be worse, wouldn't it? It seems like a tie I would – I don't know. Who knows? That's another one. Leave that one down in the comments section too. Would a tie be worse? I like that. That's the follow-up question to the other one. Yeah. See, we're getting into the weeds now. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it for this week. Boys, Brad, Chad, it was good talking to you. Um, you guys got anything to say to the people before we head on out of here? All right, we're five and we're five and two. Let's keep this train going. Call, call. I'll be uh sorry about me. I'm, I'm I'll be better on the tweeter machine here. Uh I couldn't really tweet. This past week, I was pretty upset. So it's hard, man. It's hard. I I have uh, (laughs) I have reaction videos that I'm gonna send to Chad here in a little bit, and we'll put those up on TikTok. Some of them are, uh, they're pretty hilarious. If I have to say so myself, them up, and then we'll just have more content from there, and you can all make fun of me being a goon watching television. Um, Okay, so I guess we're just gonna get out of here then. Thank you so much for listening. Follow us on TikTok. Uh, Follow us on Twitter. Brad, Chad, it was good talking to you, and I will see you next week for our bi week podcast. Adios, amigos. Call, call, boys. Call, call. Call, call.